All right, guys, do you want to know the best products that we reviewed in 2021? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Della Salo with Audioholics. We got a special guest, my oldest daughter, Hi. Gabriella. Big Ariana Grande fan. Yes. Yeah. She wanted to help me tell you guys what the best products that Audioholics reviewed in 2021. This list of products is based on the stuff that we actually reviewed. There's tons of great products out there. We've covered tons of great stuff this year, but these are the ones that stood out in our testing. And I wanna first thank James Larson because he was the one that was responsible for a lot of our loudspeaker reviews this year. And this list does not come lightly. This is based on a lot of objective measurements, performance measurements, and listening tests. So maybe Gabby, you can kind of help me read over the categories and we'll talk about each product in them and why they're such standout products for this year. Sounds good. Our best streaming DAC amp, NOM Unity Atom Headphone Edition. So this is a really great product. This, this is brought to you from the guys at Focal. We're huge fans of Focal speakers. We've got Focal speakers in the Audioholic Smart House. I had their older Archie amplifier for my headphones and they discontinued that. It's still a wonderful product. This is basically the replacement to that. And it's got some incredibly good features. It supports pretty much every major streaming format except for MQA. We don't really care about MQA anyway, so not a big deal right there. It also has um, a really nice graphical color front panel display, so you could see all your album art on it while you're streaming. And you can use this in a high-end two-channel system as well as a streaming uh, unit for yourself. So it's not just you know it's not just limited to use for a headphone amp. You could integrate this into your system. The price on it's thirty-three hundred dollars. It's not cheap. But when you get a product of this caliber and what it does, it kind of makes sense that it costs that much. And you guys really need to check that out. Check out our review on that. Great product. So what's the next one? Perfect. Okay. So the next one is our best integrated amplifier is our Denon PMA A110. That's the 110th anniversary product that's built in their Shawakawa factory in Japan. The same factory that built the AVR5805, as you guys know, that's my wet dream of Avery receivers, my favorite receiver of all time. The best of the best Denon products are made there. And what I really love about this product is it's just a really meaty amplifier. I like that it's conservatively rated. It says it's 80 watts a channel. I bench tested it. It got to 160 watts in the four ohm, so it doubled down like any good amplifier should. It was stable at two ohms. I measured up to 300 watts dynamic. This thing has balls for an 80 watt per channel amplifier. Weighs about 50 pounds, so it's a classic AB amplifier with a big linear supply on it. The heat sinking on it. I could run this thing on my test bench for you know 20 minutes just blasting it with power and it didn't get hot. It, you couldn't cook an egg on it. And it's got some great features. It's got the quad differential 1795 Burr Brown DAX. Those are some of my favorite DAC setups. That's what the older Denon receivers used to use. You could do native uh, DSD for SACD because it's got a USB input on it. So if you want to stream from your computer and you've got SACD files, you can do that. The only downside on that amplifier is it doesn't have a subwoofer pre-out. I think that was a mistake on their part. They put preamp inputs. I don't see many people using it as a preamp input. So my only feedback there is if you're going to use a product like this, Use it with a full range pair of speakers. We tested this product with the Paradigm 800Fs, which are in this room right now. We tested it with the Revel F328BEs. We've tested it with a variety of speakers and in every situation, this amplifier just sounded great. And if you're looking for a two channel integrated amp, it's really hard to beat. Our next one is our best mid-price bookshelf speakers. It's going to be our Arendel Sound 1723 Monitor THX. So that's a really special speaker. We recently discovered Arendel Sound or Arendel, however you want to say it. I know there's going to be grammar police down below <laughs> saying I'm saying it wrong. I call it Arendel or Arendel. I don't care. Um, so we recently discovered this brand thanks to, to Spare Change. Shane Bolin kind of introduced me to the brand. And let me tell you, this is a no holds bar speaker system. This model in particular has dual eight inch drivers. 
in an MTM configuration with a very large waveguide tweeter. That waveguide is awesome at matching directivity between the mid-range and the tweeter. So you get very good integration with the drivers, excellent predictable off-axis response. Because it's THX rated, it's low distortion, it has high output capability. This is no small bookshelf speaker. I'm gonna warn you guys, even though it's in the bookshelf category, this thing is huge. It weighs a good 50 or 60 pounds. Make sure you have a stable stand or a platform that you put it on. These are gonna surprise you, not only with their great fidelity, their great output capability, but their awesome build quality too. Very hard to beat the speaker at this price class, Arendelle Sound. Also check out their subwoofers, very good products all around. And then we have our best budget tower speakers, our Paradigm Premier 800F. So I'm a really big fan of these speakers. James Larson reviewed these a couple of years ago, and I think we even awarded it back then, and I forgot to be honest with you. But I got them in, and I got to listen to them in my own listening environment, and I did a YouTube video on them. And in this room in particular, we've got the 800Fs with the 500C center, the Elite 80Rs for the Atmos channels, and the Elite 80As for the surround channels with the angled baffle. We're running a 5.2.4 system in here with two JL Audio in-wall subs, the 13-inch ones. And let me tell you, this is magic. Anybody that's come into our house, even though we've got the state-of-the-art home theater room, they come in, they listen to the system, and it's magical. The 800Fs with that PPT lens on it, it really does work. I mean, it just you, the imaging that these speakers have really is good. They play very clean. The 500C center channel, even though it's small, it has a three and a half inch mid or a four inch mid, I couldn't believe the amount of output you can get out of it and the off axis response because it's in a WTMW driver configuration, not just the typical MTM that you get with budget speakers. Your on and off axis response is good. So that means anywhere you sit, you're gonna get good, clear dialogue intelligibility. And that's what really is important with home theater. Check out the Premier 800Fs. We love these speakers and I think you will too. Okay, and then we have our best flagship tower speakers. It's gonna be the Perliston S7T tower loudspeakers. So Perliston is a special company with Dan Romer behind it. He's behind a lot of good products, many of which that are on many of our product of the year lists. So the Perliston is really the top of the game when it comes to a passive loudspeaker with their waveguide system that they have with the two mid-ranges and the tweeter flanked in it as an MTM. Um, it's really an incredible system. It's the first THX Dominus rated speaker. Let me repeat that, the first THX Dominus rated speaker. That means it could put out a clean 117 plus dB, very low distortion. James Larson basically, and he's the most pragmatic person I've met in audio, said that these are the best sounding best measuring speakers he's ever reviewed. That speaks volumes to hear him say something like that. Incredible build quality, really good, excellent measurements. If you look at our review and you see the measurements on the speaker, this thing is truly state of the art. It's a full range tower, lots of output. The entire product line is solid. In fact, because James liked these speakers so much, I requested a set to bring in here. I wanna hear them. Don't you guys wanna know how they compare to the Rebels and the RBHs? Yeah. You're going to be finding that out next year. So stay tuned. But in the meantime, if you're looking for the premier kick-ass full-range towers with real output, the Perilous and 7ST is a hard one to beat. Or S7T, sorry. And then our best powered subwoofer is going to be the Monolith 16-inch THX Ultra. This thing is a bruiser. Let me just warn you. This is not a small subwoofer. This is not a girly man subwoofer. This thing has a 16 inch driver. Gabby, you probably couldn't even lift the driver. The thing is so heavy. It I is, can't lift anything. <laughs> it's, it's got four ports on it. It's got an 1800 or 2000 watt amplifier. It's THX ultra rated, but to be honest with you, the output that it has, it would meet the dominant spec. I'm really sure of that. This is probably one of the highest output subs that we measured. James Larson said that this was truly a state-of-the-art subwoofer. It sounds great. The great thing about it is I know there's a lot of people out there saying, I can't have a ported sub. It's not musical. Well, yes, that's, it is musical. That's not true. And we have the measurements that show that. If you look at the group delay measurements in our review, it stays under a cycle, even down to its tuning frequency. 
maybe it goes a little bit over a cycle, but definitely below a cycle and a half. That's difficult to do for a ported subwoofer. Usually when you have below the tune and frequency, you start getting group delay. And then that's when you have problems with the way it's ported. You can hear it sounds boomy or you can hear resonances. That doesn't happen with this sub. This thing is truly incredibly well engineered. The only downside is, is it's a giant box. You got to be able to accommodate that. And if you listen to the uh, interview we just did with Hobie, their best-selling subwoofers are their big subwoofers. So obviously there is a clientele, there's a customer base for having massive subs. So, you know, I would really talk to you guys, you know, talk to your wives. Tell them you need bass in your life. This is the kind of subwoofer you need if you want to have real bass. If you want to hear Arnold Schwarzenegger thinking when he's crushing Terminators, you want this kind of subwoofer. This thing's the real deal. The only thing it doesn't have is it doesn't have any app control. It doesn't have any digital front end on it like some of the other subs, like the SVSs and such. And it's not as pretty as some of the other subs out there. But what you're getting with the sub is balls to the wall, volume 11, deep pounding bass, clean bass. You get two of these in a room and it's going to be a game changing experience for you guys. You're going to be able to feel every little thing that you happens in the movie. Your spinal column is going to shake. It's all that good stuff that makes Audioholics what we are. In fact, we came up with a new spec for our Basaholic room size rating called the Basaholic Maximus. And I kind of came up with that spec because I think a subwoofer like this deserves it. I think it's going to meet it. I don't 100% know what the final numbers of our spec are. We're working on it now. But rest assured, when we release what this spec is, we will recertify subs like this if they meet it, and we will let you know if it meets the, t the uh, Basaholic Maximus spec. Our best compact powered subwoofer is our SVS PB1000 Pro. So we're big fans of SVS, as you guys know. And this is basically, um, it's a refresh on their 1000 series. Now they did have a price increase because of the supply chain issues. But even with the price increase, it's still a very good value. It's got a 12-inch driver, 350-watt amplifier. It meets our large Basaholic room size rating, which is excellent. But if you can't handle a sub with a box as big as this one is, because it's not small, they have the SB1000 Pro. It meets our medium Basaholic room size rating. Doesn't play quite as loud, doesn't dig quite as deep. But you put a couple of those in your room, and they disappear into the room and you've got good, tight, clean bass. SVS has a 60-day, I'm sorry, 45-day return policy. They pay shipping both ways. They have a great app, a great user interface. If you want to do PEQ function to flatten out the bass in your room, all of that is available at the power of your phone, the fingertip of your phone. You could do all that with the SVS subwoofer. Great customer support, great product. Love it. The next one is our wireless speaker, and it's our Rocksteady Stadium Bluetooth speaker system. So this is a, a speaker system that Wade Robeson reviewed for us. He really liked this system for many reasons. Number one, it's got uh, Bluetooth 5.0, so it's very high quality. Um, it doesn't have Wi-Fi, but it is Bluetooth, but it's a very high quality, like CD quality level because it's 5.0. You could pair a bunch of these together in a house. So you could have distributed audio throughout your house. And the real secret sauce coming to this thing is they have the world's first powered portable subwoofer. And I can't wait to test this thing. You could check out our live stream. It looks like it's really kick ass. I think they said the battery life lasts up to 16 hours on this. And the satellite speakers themselves have two passive radiators to extend the base if you can't put the sub. And they have a real tweeter. So a lot of these little portable speakers, they either give you a full range cone or they give you this tiny little wimpy tweeter. This has a three quarter inch tweeter. So you're getting some real output. I think it's 20 watts on the bass driver, 10 watts on the tweeter. Really good for a system like this. Check it out. It's a good alternative to Sonos. Our best over ear headphones are the Focal Clear MG. So I'm a huge Focal fan, as you guys know. Don Dunn as well. We're big Focal nerds. We like all their products, the build quality, the aesthetics of it, and most importantly, the sound quality. And I've had a chance to listen to the Stelia and the Clear, and these are just really good headphones. The craftsmanship on them is top notch. The sound quality is just out of this world. If you sit down one night and you just want to relax and put on a pair of headphones, they're comfortable good sound quality, they just, you just disappear with the music. 
And I do like the open backs because you can still hear your environment around you. But if you want more bass, you'd probably want to go with a closed back version of it as well. Either one is good. They can be EQ'd. There's plenty of dynamic range in those drivers. So if you want to boost the bass, it's not going to overload them. Just good quality. I know they're not cheap, but you know, sometimes it's, it's not cheap to be hip and trendy. Our best theater seating is going to be the Valencia Tuscany. So as you guys know, we did a couple of videos for Valencia seating. They're a sponsor in the Audi Hulk Smart House. We've, we're actually sitting on some Valencia seats right now. These were custom made couches for this room. We have a, a video on that. Uh, but I really, my favorite out of all the seats from Valencia is really the Tuscany. And it's just because they're like butter. They're like butter. They're so comfortable. I like the fact that they're a real full range recliner. A lot of these recliner seats that you go and you look at, at rooms to go or whatever, you go and recline and I'm almost six foot and my legs are hanging off of it. I can't stand that. The Valencia seats give you a full recline. They have incredibly good lumbar support, which is great for guys like me with back issues. Very comfortable. I like the fact that the seat cushions are contoured. So you're kind of in the middle and then it's kind of rounded and contoured to your body. And most importantly, the back of the seat, a lot of these theater chairs, they just have a big back and it blocks the surround channels. It blocks the sound. These don't do that. They also have the ability to adjust the headrest forward if you really want to get away from the seat and not have your ears blocked by anything. Uh, they have LED backlighting on them. They've got great accessories. We've got the graphite table, the, the, the computer table. You've got the little wine caddy thing. And they have the Leggett and Praggett um, reclining mechanism, so it's really high quality. I think it's rated for three-year warranty on it. Just great seats. They're fully customizable. In our case, we have the um, we have the chairs that are roasted chestnut. Secondary color is chocolate, and the piping color is crimson wine. And there's lots of color combinations that you can do. Twenty-two hundred bucks for a pair of two. It starts at that price, and depending on the grade of leather, goes up from there. Check them out if you guys want some great seats in your room. Definitely check out Valencia Seating. And then our best AV processor is our Storm Audio ISP MK2. So as you guys know, I've been spending some time with this Storm Audio piece over a year, actually. It's probably the most complex piece of AV gear I've ever reviewed or I've ever had a chance to evaluate. Um, it's intimidating at first, but the power that it gives you with great power comes great responsibility. And what I love about this processor is it's got native 24 channels. You could have up to 32 channels if you want to add, matrix some extra channels in your room. Best base management, best base routing I've ever seen. It's one of the first processes I've been able to run LFE to my main speakers because I'm running a very large RBH system. I could have LFE going to them and I could route that base from all the channels set small in there as well and I could route it to a dedicated subwoofer channel and I could control the base levels for each channel as well. There's so much configuration options. If you're a pro integrator, this is kind of the processor to beat. If you're really serious about getting the best sound, the fact that you could do all these different things with the base routing, base management, and their crossover filters are dead accurate. I measured them. And they've got 20 band PEQ per channel. So if you really want to fine tune things, you can. And the great thing about that is their PEQ filters are accurate. Oh, my sound is accurate. And I say that, I don't say that lightly because I've measured a lot of products that have PEQ filters and you go and you set the PEQ filter at a certain frequency and a certain bandwidth and you go and measure it and it doesn't line up. These are dead balls accurate. They're right where they are, right where it says on the, on the menus. Pretty easy to figure out how to do that as well. I also like the fact that they have digital outputs for the speaker level outputs. So this is really the, this is the frontier. We're basically five to 10 years away from this being, I think is gonna be a standard in really high-end home theaters, having active speakers with active crossovers and to be able to digitally connect to an external DSP box and not have to go through an additional analog to digital conversion stage and add noise speaks volumes for quality. And if you hear a fully active system with a digital connection between the processor and the mating DSP and amplifier, it is just unbelievable. You'll never go back to passive. That's how good it is. There's only two processors on the market that offer, the, offer this. It's the Storm Audio and the Trinov. They're both incredible pieces. I do like the Storm Audio's in, in extensive bass management 
and the fact that they're willing to upgrade this in the future. Next year, they're looking at doing HDMI 2.1, and they're going to do a DAC upgrade for audio files that want even better performance. So it's just a, it's a really great product. Um, I like the flexibility of being able to do everything I can. You could create multiple zones if you like. You could have different speaker profiles. It's just there's so much I can't even like give you. I can't convey it in this video. You have to go and read our review. I'm going to do a separate YouTube formal review of it. I already have videos on the base management and on the bench test. You could look at that. And I think that pretty much wraps up. There's oh, there's more. one more. There's one more. Okay, let's Silly. go. Our last item is our best portable headphone DAC amp, the THX Onyx. So THX is winning a lot of awards this year, and it, rightfully so. They're back and they're in full force. And the THX Onyx DAC headphone amp, portable DAC, it's really something special. It has their um, AAA amp. It's the Acromatic Audio Amplifier. And this is probably the cleanest you can get. I think the signal to noise ratio is greater than 118 dB. This is based on the amplifier technology that Benchmark Audio uses for their power amps. And as you guys have probably seen on other websites, um, that amplifier has such low distortion and such low noise, you almost can't even measure it unless you have the very best audio precision analyzer. That's how clean it is. And the great thing about this DAC is it's just, not only is it state of the art, but it's very low power, so it won't drain your phone battery. So if you invested in a great pair of headphones, you don't want to use the lousy DAC that's in your um, phone or in your portable device. You could bypass it using something like this. $200 is not cheap, but it's also not expensive considering the level of performance that you get. And it makes a huge difference when you have a good DAC and a good amplifier section in it to drive your headphones. So check that out if you guys listen to a lot of portable music with good headphones. And I think that pretty much wraps up this year for 2021. I want to thank you guys for supporting the channel. Really appreciate that, sticking with us, enjoying our reviews, supporting our Patreon channel, patreon.com slash audioholics. We always appreciate your support. You get direct access to us if you want to ask questions or suggest video topics. I'm glad we made it through 2021. I'm hopeful for 2022. I think it's going to be a great year for everybody. We got to get past the supply chain issues and hopefully that happens. And then we could bring you even more reviews for 2022. Would you like to add anything before we go? You want to shout out to Ariana Grande? Shout out to Ariana Grande. I love you. <laughs> yes. And thank you for having me on your video. It was fun. I don't know anything that he's talking about, but I like listening to music. I like the weekend and stuff. So she's got a great Pink ear. Floyd. Let me tell you, she's got a great ear. My other daughter has a great ear. So when I do different kind of calibrations, I'll let them sit down and I see how they like it and I see their eyes light up. I like it. Yeah. Or they That's just cool. don't like the music I play and then they leave. So it's one of the. <laughs> One or the other. I like it sometimes. It depends. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. That's a wrap. And until next time, my friends, keep listening. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Bye. Doing it from the knee up, right? Or higher? Is it recording? Bueller? <laughs> Just a stand back. Okay. Now I see the red light. Happy holiday. You're good to go. All right. What was it? Look, almost there. Good camera. 4K. We gotta buy it, yeah. Let me think of an intro. What's up? Are gonna... uh, uh, you yeah. ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right. What did you think about that Den and Peace, the A110 anniversary integrated amp? Just the look of it alone and the integrity of the quality build. I was perplexed. Honestly, I, I kind of like the vintage with a modern touch look.